Joining me now is Ken Langone, co-founder of Home Depot. Ken is also the author of the new book, I Love Capitalism. And Ken, did something in the current political environment drive you to write a book? Are there things you're seeing out there that you're unhappy with? Yes, not that I was unhappy with, but I was concerned with. Uh, back in early 16, I was watching TV and I noticed that Bernie Sanders had gathered a lot of young people around him. And I thought to myself, my God, these kids don't get it. Capitalism is the way. What, what Bernie was talking about was socialism. Government can't do everything. And I was concerned and I said, you know what? I think they need to understand that capitalism works and it works for everybody. Not just for me, but for everybody. And it, it, it makes us a better nation. It makes us a stronger nation. So that was the motivation for writing the book. And Ken, you didn't grow up with a lot of money. You uh, went to school, you got a job on Wall Street, had a very successful Wall Street career before founding Home Depot. How did you go from Wall Street to Home Depot? Well, I met Bernie Marcus and fell in love with him. He was running a chain of stores out in California called Handy Dan. And I, I was so impressed with the way he did it. Uh, I ended up buying a lot of the stock in that company. It was a public company. He ended up getting fired. He and I got together, Arthur Blank, Pat Farah, he and I, so the four of us, and we started Home Depot in the uh, uh, late spring of 78, of and from there we went on. And uh, it's been a glorious ride. It was, we satisfied, here's an example of capitalism. There was an incredible need, which was people wanting to do more in their homes, fix their homes up, take care of their homes. And we decided we were gonna give them all kinds of choices in every category. They were going to be at affordable prices, and most importantly of all, we were going to have people on the floor helping the customers to navigate what they needed to do to get the job done. And that's, that was the simple formula, and it worked. And we had a great team. We still have a great team. We have great leadership now. Bernie and Arthur and I have all moved on to other things. The company is thriving. The company is booming. And that's capitalism, Scott. Yeah, why has Home Depot been able to thrive in the age of Amazon and e-commerce? What's the secret? Look, I believe that good competition will make you better if you're a competitor. Amazon has forced Home Depot, in my opinion, to focus more on alternative ways to shopping for our customers, i.e. online. Because Amazon is there, I think we have a much heightened effort in terms of online sales and, and the internet and the last, all those things that matter. So I commend Amazon and I'm especially grateful for Amazon to Amazon because I think they forced us to recognize consumers may want to shop different ways and we want all of those consumers. We don't want just the people that come into our stores. We want those people that want to sit at home or want to get things delivered to them and we're ready for that. So that's, to me, competition is good for everybody. Those of us that are competitive do better in a competitive environment. You know, Home Depot went public in what, 1981? The stock was at September a few, of 81. The stock was at a few pennies then. Now it's at almost $200 a share. Would you say the, the FANG stocks, the Facebooks, the Amazons are the modern day Home Depots? Are they going to be around in 30 years like Home Depot is now? As long as they morph into what the needs of people want, in other words, it's static. You, you, don't, you don't start with a Home Depot and leave it. The Home Depot today is totally different from the Home Depot we founded 40 years ago. Totally different. Yeah, the basic stuff is the same. Stores, merchandise, locations. But the way we do things now is totally different. New products, new ways to sell those products, new technologies, all these things. So you morph. You, you've got to keep yourself current. You've got to keep yourself modern. So, and I, look, you look at the ones you mentioned, the FANG stocks, I have every faith in believing that, that these people, they're all young, by the way, and they're all entrepreneurs, they're all capitalists. I think those people have instinctively the right desire to make sure they stay current, that they stay relevant. And Ken, in the book, you say there are opportunities out there. You might just have to look harder for them. Yep. Do you think you could have started Home Depot today? Absolutely providing there wasn't a Home Depot out there. In other words, if today, because there is Home Depot, to try and compete with us is going to be, a, we had back then when we started, they were fragmented. There were stores, Rickle, Pergamon, Channel in the Northeast, Scotty's in Florida, Payless Cashways in the Midwest, Handy Dan in the West. So it was a fragmented business. We 
saw the opportunity to make it a national business, and that's exactly what we did. We turned it into a national effort. But I, there are other opportunities. Look, at, people are aging. People that are aging need, have different needs. Address those needs. Do it in a way that you satisfy that need. At the same time, you're able to make a profit by satisfying that need. That's business. That's capitalism. That's how it works. And one staple of Home Depot has been that the company has always paid employees more than the minimum wage. You know, we've seen a couple of major companies do this, but only more recently. Talk about that strategy at Home Depot. How did it help the company's bottom line? Why is it good for business? Look, the most important thing Home Depot has going for it are the 400,000 people that work in the stores. They're our secret weapon. They're not so secret. They're our, they're our magic source, if you will. They hold it together. We want our people to come to work every day. We want to do everything we can to give them career path opportunities to allow them to live the American dream like I did. One basic number that excites the hell out of me. We have 3,000 people that, out of 400,000. We have 3,000 people that came to work for us in the parking lot, pushing carts in. That was an entry level job. Those 3,000 people today are multimillionaires and they're still working for the company. That's how it's supposed to work. So we knew day one, the most important thing we have going for us are the kids that put the orange apron on every day. And we're going to do everything we can then and now, and God bless the current management, they're reinforcing that belief that we've got to make sure we take good care of our people. And that's what we're doing. And we do it by recognizing that we want these people to give us everything they've got and we're willing to pay for it. And our model, our business model, allows us to pay better than minimum wage. So we're going to pay better than minimum wage. And we do. And you highlight one of those individuals in the book, someone who was able to not only pay off their mortgage, but their parents' mortgage as well yep. because of that business model. Yeah, he, showed, he called and said he had to come see me, and the reason he wanted to come see me was he wanted me to know he paid his parents' mortgage off the year before. He paid his own mortgage off five months before we met, and he got a call from his Merrill Lynch broker that his account at Merrill Lynch was now a million dollars, so therefore he was a millionaire, and he wanted me to know that. That's capital. And this is a kid that didn't, he, he got out of high school, no college education, but he worked like hell. He was passionate about what he was doing. He wanted to learn and he wanted to make sure our customers have a fabulous experience. That's what it's all about. Ken, what do you make of the economy? The markets, the stock market has had a great run. Unemployment is low, 3.8%. What's your outlook on the U.S.? I'm concerned about this noise about tariff. If it's a negotiating ploy, I can live with it. If, in fact, it turns into a strategy, I think it's going to be cataclysmic. I think it's going to be terrible. There's no way anybody wins in a trade war. And, if, and as I say, if the current administration, and I admire so much of what they've done, but if the current administration makes tariffs an end in and of itself, that will not have a happy ending. If, on the other hand, they're using it saber-rattling, so to speak, I can live with that. I hope it happens sooner rather than later because these things have a tendency of getting a life all their own. We obviously have a business person as president right now, Donald Trump. Yep. Howard Schultz, Starbucks founder, is stepping aside, and there's expectations that he might run for office one day. Do you think we need more business people in Absolutely. office? Absolutely. I think one of the greatest things to happen because of Trump's presidency is for a lot of people to say, hey, wait a minute, he did it, I can do it. So Howard Schultz, Jamie Dimon, these people haven't said they're going to do it. Mike Bloomberg. I can go on down a list of all these very successful business people who have demonstrated an ability to lead leadership and who have a lot of smarts and who understand the importance of capitalism and they understand the importance of our economy. All these things argue. And this nonsense, well, we had two. We had Hoover and we had Trump. Give me a break. These guys have run fat. Look at the job Howard Schultz did at, at Starbucks. Look at the job that Mike Bloomberg did, creating Bloomberg and then turning it into the behemoth and the powerhouse that it is. Look at Jamie Dimon, what he's did in the banking industry. I can go on and on and on. These people have leadership skills, and more importantly, they understand how the system needs to thrive. And they'll make, they'll make, a, lot, they'll make a whole lot more right decisions than wrong decisions. So I'm all in favor of getting away from this political ruling class that we have, we had in America. I think that's going to change for the better. You mentioned quite a few business leaders. Is there one in particular that you think should run for office in 2020? All of the ones, all of the ones that I mentioned and more. I, there's any number of people. 
the guy that ran Frank, uh, ran Home Depot, Frank Blake. Frank is the most understated human being in the world, but he's a great leader in his own style. He's a fabulous leader. He thinks, he's smart, he's passionate. He believes in the goodness, the fundamental goodness in people. He wants people to have better lives. And I suspect this is Mike, and this is Jamie, and this is Howard, and all these other people. There's any number of people out there that could be great leaders of our nation. We've got to encourage them to come into the process. That's what we have to do. And Ken, before we go, you mentioned at the top your concerns about how young people view capitalism. Give us one piece of advice, especially for young people who say, look, capitalism is over. It doesn't work. I'll tell you what. Go work for a company. Learn all the basics of that company. And then go start your own business in that company's business. Go buy a Taco Bell franchise. Go buy a McDonald's franchise. Don't stop with one. Make it 40. Make it 50. Make it... Make it 100. Capitalism works. More importantly, it brings everybody. Look at Home Depot. We have 400,000 people gainfully employed, well paid, with various programs that give them the opportunity to accumulate an estate, to accumulate an asset base. That's how it's supposed to work, and it does work. Just give it a chance. All right, Ken Langone, we'll leave it there for right now. Again, the book is I Love Capitalism. Ken, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it.